first of all, huzzah, because Cloudbot is working, which means points are being accumulated. Um, obviously, like, I couldn't track who, who was chatting, who wasn't. I could track who was there. So basically, if you were there uh, on Wednesday when Cloudbot went kaput, you got 450 points. So congrats. There's actually a lot of you that can uh, redeem. But we'll talk more about that in a second. First, let's go ahead and say our hellos. So let's see. Oh, the poll is hiding it. I can't see who's up at the top. Oh, I think it's Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Let's see. And then Emily and Vicky and Callie. Hello, hello. Aspie, hello. Secret, hello. Megan, hello. Oh, Megan, I have an update for you in this little thing over here. <laughs> let's see. Ch -ch -ch Tracy, hello. I missed someone. If I miss you, I promise that's not on purpose. Uh, let's see. I think, oh, let's see. May Lynn, hello. Think, think I got. Did I say hello to Ev? Hi, Ev. <laughs> My dear, super smart. She is super smart. Uh, let's see. Kara, hello. Okay, I think. I think. Oh, Leanne. Hi, Leanne. <laughs> I think I got all caught up. Um, but yeah. So it's Friday evening. On Wednesday, we ended with we're working on the background of this one, so that's what we're going to work on today. Hi, bibliophile, welcome. Um, if we finish early, we'll probably head out early, but I don't know about that. I don't know. We we got a lot of layers to do on the back, and I don't want to rush it. But before we get to that, before we get to that, ba -da -ba, we have updates. Oh, plus some vinyl in here because I was uh, making vinyl shirts for the fam, and I dropped a few pieces in there. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, and then decided to let Riggs out and get a couple bottles of water. Perfect. Uh, yeah, Steve just uh, just refilled mine. Annie Hoozle. All right, so we have four square updates. Uh, currently, up on the wall, we've got the sample Little Emily one. I can't really see it, but Josephine, Vicky, and the Durbin clan. And then this one, you say, but it's blank. What's this for? This is for Brit because Brit has redeemed one, but I did not. Obviously, like on the redemptions I have, I have one to two weeks to do it. I like to get them done sooner if I can, but I know that once more starts to uh, be redeemed, that it's going to take me a little bit to get through it all. So, uh, but Brit redeemed hers today. So this is her designated square. Ev, actually, I don't know why I need that. We can just put the box to the side. Ev, this one's yours. So Ev got the embroidery one. It is a different font than what is the other one. I'll probably do them all different. I was toying with the idea of kind of putting a drop shadow on it, but it's not as visible as I would like. We're gonna make that brighter here. Okay, there you go. Okay, so there's like a darker purple around the edge, but still it's really, <laughs> I know, right? Not at all. Hi, Kathleen. So this one is Ev's. Ta-da. Right, yeah, I, I'm gonna take the opportunity to get creative with all of the stitching ones. I need to I need to think about uh, Brits and how I wanna do hers. And then we have Megan, she redeemed hers. We've got purple vinyl. I'm also doing like different vinyl for all of them and different fonts, like it's all gonna be different. I don't want it all look like, you know, it's supposed to show personality for each one. Um, but yes, there's Megan's. And then we have an update on Renee's. She got a new add-on, a little uh, bunny rabbit with a little little faux pearl here. She wanted the red bow tie. So that is Renee's. Currently she's in the lead, not that it's a race, but yeah, super, super cute. So these will get hung back up on the wall uh, after stream later. But yes, we have three updates and a soon to be, a soon to be one. Right? I know. I thought so. Initially, I was like, oh, well, I'll just do the purple, but it kind of disappeared, like the, the pale purple on the purple. It just didn't stand out as much as I wanted to. I also have some like white that I made uh, like toy with and everything, but um, yeah. So there we have it. Four square updates that will make, when, when they're all done, that will make eight squares up top. I'm going to need to figure out positioning on here to fit everyone's. <laughs> like maybe I should put the the uh, charity one like off to the side on its own to make room for, for all the other ones. Right, Secret? I know everybody's getting really close. There's a good number of you. I also pulled up the loyalty score so I can like refresh and make sure that it's working. Like here, let's see. Where, oh, Ever Demon. I was looking for your Ev's name up at the top. But um, let's see, I know Claire is in here. Let's see if it's registered any points yet. 
here was it 39.50 well that's not the right thing i pushed the right wrong button here we go okay so carrie was at 39.15 okay we're still at 39.15 but we only just started we haven't been live for that long but I, the fact that it's registering you guys asking for the points i will take as a good thing i did yes oh here let me it's by the ironing board right now because i was just making uh the shirt but here i'll show you i debated about whether or not i wanted it uh in the background but hang on it is so pretty renee i was just like ooh. <laughs> okay here we go look at how pretty it is and it's like solid, man. It had full on, like, it had the screws and the washers. Like, this is easily like the nicest one. Oh, it's just be rude, but it's so nice. <laughs> so, thank you. It was a very good present. I'm so excited. Right? Nightbot, Nightbot is just doing his thing. Right? It's so pretty. <laughs> oh, so yes. Very, uh, very, very happy. Happy with that. Thank you so much. Right, I know, I cannot wait. I've been doing the watercoloring for now because I haven't had time to really get into the acrylic painting. I'm hoping to, uh, you know, with the kids being sick, uh, little Emily is still not feeling great and she was home all week this week. So there really wasn't a ton of time, but I was gonna show you guys this here before we get to it. So I did another small one. This one, I didn't do just watercolor. I also did gouache because I like the way the paint layers. I will say, I'm learning a lot more about gouache as I've been doing these. So this one was just, just a fun one I made up in my head. <laughs> but I had an idea because I haven't, um, I was trying to think about what I wanted to do for the sticker club uh, this month. And I had an idea. I've got all these like little paintings. The theme that I'm going to do is like a painting theme. So I'm gonna bring these in and I'm gonna create a frame for the outside of them. So like the bigger stickers will have the frame. And then I have another one on deck to paint. It's all sketched out and ready to go. Now it's hard to see. Let's see if I can get it in focus maybe. Maybe it'll get in focus. Yeah, okay, it's hard to see, but can you tell what that is? It's really light because I don't want it to be too dark, but it's going to be um, bamboo, bamboo. So, <laughs> well, there's lo there's lots of kitty charms, so you'll be good. Like the color, most are light brown with the horse. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah, the darker wood. It's almost like um like a not a mahogany, but maybe like a cherry wood. It's really nice. Oh, nice tray. It's always nice to go out. Um, I won't have time to do it this weekend, but next weekend I want to. Uh, <laughs> I could. Let's see. Pulled it. Pulled again. I'm saying, do I wondering? I should appear. But bag end. Yes. Oh, so this is my. Um, if you guys missed it, I am doing the whole um, Lord of the Rings theme for our downstairs, and I have a couple paintings in mind. And this one is is yes. This is this is bag end. Here, I'll, I'll bring it closer. But um, yeah. So this is. Oh, I've got it. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is bag end. I haven't, like I said, I haven't had, there we go, <laughs> backwards. I haven't had time to work on it much, but it's, it's getting there. Here, I can flip over this one. Ooh. Here we go. See, it's much brighter on this way. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's a slow, a slow work in progress. I want to get back to it now, especially since I have a proper place to work on it. Um, but yeah, this is going to go downstairs and then I have like a really big, like 18 by 24 size one that I'm working on, but yes. <laughs> oh, happy early birthday. But yes, lots to, uh, which brought me to the question of the day today. I did it in form of a poll. I know we bought, let me see, I went to, hold on, I'm at, oh, sounds good. Have a good dinner. Um, I know, I know that, uh, we've been doing pencils a lot lately, so... The question of the day was, what medium? Oh, Renee, thank you. Honestly, I didn't used to do this much painting and stuff before I started doing like the coloring and the live stream. Like I did and I liked it, but I, I struggled with it. And I think honestly, doing the streaming has given me the confidence to kind of step back into it. Okay, let me get this in focus here. Okay, there we go. 
I realize, like, I know it's muted, but the lighting is not doing it any favors. So let's see. Let's take a look at the poll here. What are we at? We are at 26% pencils, 34% markers, 17% paint, 23 pastels. Well, I think that uh, answers it. I think whatever we do next, whatever we do next, uh, we'll do markers. Mm. Which I'm going to do another poll. <laughs> Sounds good, Emma. I'm going to do another poll real quick. And for the next one, I know we've been doing Johanna a lot, but like I, I can never get enough of it. So uh, for our next image, because we should be done with this one tonight. Do we want to do, uh, let's see, Johanna. We could throw in a Kirby one would be interesting with markers. Uh, a Kirby, I'm gonna just put portrait because that could be anything. I actually have a bunch of new images from Laura Rafferty. I don't know if you guys, two pole limit. No, I'm gonna do all the poles. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Hi, Kathleen. Um, Laura Rafferty just uh, dropped a bunch of uh, a bunch of portraits in her Etsy store if you didn't see it. Uh, okay, Johanna, Kirby, portraits, or we'll do Hannah Carlton. Why not? All right. Okay, so place place your votes. In the meantime, let's go ahead and jump in on this because I want to get started on this background. Like we have loads of layers still to do. So we're going to kind of pick up where we left off last time. We're using the Derwent drawing set and we got a lot of blues and greens and all that stuff. Try my hand at watercolor pencils this weekend. Ooh, nice. Oh, that was the other thing is on the one with the house. Renee, I used those, um, uh, the Karen, De the museums that you sent me. Is that last year's birthday? You're an awesome birthday present giver. Uh, <laughs> I used, I used the watercolor pencils to like touch up some of the edges, and then and then I uh, got some of them, got some of them wet. Let's see, Christina, hello. Oh yeah. Um. Ooh, try exclamation point Laura in chat. I feel like I might have made a command for her at one point, but otherwise, um, just Laura Rafferty, R-A-F-F-E-R-T-Y. I don't know, Melissa, or if one of the mods want to grab a link to her Etsy store, because I want to say her Etsy store is like Laura Colors 2 or something or other. Yeah, I had it. Sweet. Thank you, Ev. <laughs> I was to say, I'm pretty, like, I'm pretty sure I have most, uh, most commands for everyone at some point or another. But yeah, that's her Etsy store. Um, she hasn't been super active. She's been taking a little bit of break. I think she's been working on a team to help develop a video game, if I remember correctly. Um, she's got like a Discord for it and everything. But previously, she also did a lot of live streams. Um, she put out a coloring book that she published herself. Uh, let's see. And, ah, here it is. It's not available anymore because she sold out. And again, it wasn't through a company. It was something she did for we haven't done a hannah in a while so this is this is her book she does just the most wonderful portraits but she self-published actually there's a there's a self-portrait in the back here too so this is our lovely laura um and so let's see i've done a few of them here some of them i've like printed and such but we started that one i know i have oh there's this one okay i want to say Gosh, did we do this with Crayola? I cannot get tonight's lighting right. That is so bright. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, this one was fun. I added like the kind of dragon scale look on the side of it, but oh, awesome, Kara. Yeah, she does really great portraits. There we go. So if you like portraits, uh, definitely check her out. Oh, there you go. See, so this was the colored version on the front. And then I went with purple. <laughs> no, that's fair. She has a she has a different kind of style, absolutely, than than a lot of a lot of what we do. Okay, let's see. What do we have for the poll here? We have a Kirby. All right, I'll flip through the Kirby's after this. Like Hannah was my second one that I dove into after Joe go figure. <laughs> I went from Johanna to Hannah. Um, but I don't know. I think just because she was one of my early ones. But she definitely has a different kind of style. Absolutely. I didn't get the lighting right tonight. I don't know what the dealio is. Everything's just sort of... Maybe it's just because we're doing muted tones. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Will you be using watercolor pencils or regular paints? For... Thanks, Don. 
for when we do our next page. Well, it looks like markers won out. So we're probably gonna do Kirby, but with markers. Um, but for this one, we are still just doing the Derwent drawing pencils and we're gonna be using that for the background. So we already started on some of this. If you wanna see how we got to this, then you can go watch. It came to the end of the last room, but currently it's entirely too light. We did a little bit of wash tape around the outside to create a little bit of a kind of buffer border. Mm, that's fair, that's fair. All right, so we're gonna do ink blue. We're gonna kind of set the tone for how dark we want this to be. Hi, B. <laughs> but yeah, we can totally do a Kirby next. I'm gonna have to flip through, see what I'm uh, in the mood for. But hopefully, uh, little Emily, we're hoping we'll be back to school like normal next week. She's she's not quite in the clear yet, but she's getting closer, so that's the hope. Oh yeah, same, same. Yeah, I'm always switching up my supplies. Oh, I didn't put my headphones back in. I was like, why does it seem quiet? Oh, because I can't hear the music. <laughs> Right, no, Kirby's is really intimidating. I have a hard time doing Kirby's pages with pencils. Like I need markers or or paint or or something that like covers the surface area faster. I will say, I don't know that I've done markers too much in his books, mostly because they bleed through. But I mean, I don't like every page that he does. So it will, uh, I'll just have to make sure that whatever I'm choosing the one on the other side isn't something that I really have much of a desire to do later. I did say Kirby with markers. I left it up to chat. It was a poll. <laughs> Hi, Britt, Britt, I saw that you redeemed your square. So these were the square updates. We got Megan's, we got Ev's, we've got, Renee, did you see your, did you see your charm? We got your charm and Britt, I haven't done it yet, but this is your waiting square. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean why? What's wrong with using markers in Kirby? <laughs> Wait, is, is markers in Kirby a, a faux pas? A Kirby no-no? Yes, so intricate. So we could do, we could do like alcohol markers for the base and then use like water-based markers. Oh, you don't like every page? Gasp. <laughs> Which like at, from an illustrator's point of view, like I feel bad when there's pages that like I just don't like, but also like, you know, you can't, it's, there, there's something for everyone. Like I'm aware of the work that he put into like creating those pages, but if I'm not feeling it, it's just gonna be a, you know, a chore all the way through. How dare you? I know it, I know it. <laughs> well, to be fair, Ev, you've had a bit of an excuse. This is probably as close as I'm gonna get zoomed in just because we're gonna be moving up and down like a lot. Um, I mostly use gel pens for like embellishments and stuff. I've never done like a full page, a full page of gel pens, not because it can't be done, but because I don't trust myself not to run my hand through it before it dries. Oh, thanks. Let's see. What was the last one that I did? Was it the, was it the, uh, like Mars, the, like the red one with the planet behind it? I feel like that was my last Kirby, wasn't it? I don't know. Oh, I'm not sure. I'll have to flip through his books. If we have time at the end. Yeah, but I also like to do it in the books because not everybody has access to a printer or copy machine. So if I'm gonna do it as like something that people can follow along, I want it to be what's most relatable for everybody else. Oh, the nesting dolls. Oh, that's right, we did the nesting dolls. I forgot about that. <laughs> now I can't think, what medium did we? You're just talking, oh, Alien Worlds. <laughs> what medium? What medium? Yes, happy early birthday. What medium um, did we use for the nesting dolls? Why am I not remembered? Did we do paint? Watercolor, okay, that's what I thought. I'm telling you guys, my brain is non, it's not braining very well. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
Oh, um, speaking of coloring in general, which surprise, surprise on a coloring channel, we do that. Um, but if you have not seen, if you haven't gotten Johanna's newsletter or took, taken a look at her website or Instagram, if you were unaware, she is running a coloring competition. Now, if you haven't done her coloring competitions before, you might not know that it's not based on, you know, like how well you feel you can color your page. It's completely random. Yeah, because it's the 19th now. So it'd be the 20th. Um, but uh, she is doing a comp coloring competition where, and if you don't have the book, she also has a free download. Let's see if I can find the page, where is it? Um, but it's the Little Houses. What is wrong with me? I know it's here. Ah, there it is. Okay, so the page is this, and she has this as a free download. Um, this reel is gonna get posted tomorrow. I've been posting little reels along with it. I'm not actually entering the contest because I was lucky enough to already get a, uh, a signed copy from her. So, but what I am doing is I am putting reels if anybody needs uh, any ideas. But the thing is, is you don't have to color the whole page. You only need to color one of these little things like that's it and then you enter it um <laughs> you're good miss cones and then you uh you enter it on her website and she's got a good uh bundle of goodies for the winners so but you can check out her instagram for all of the uh and and her website for all of that let's see kirby mars page was how i found your channel oh allison i'm so glad i found the book at the bookstore it was like wow adult coloring books aren't lame <laughs> Thanks, Allison. I'm on the 20th, but for most of my life, I thought it was the 21st. Oh, that's hilarious, Renee. That is so funny. Yes. Oh my gosh. April's full of birthdays, isn't it? Reflection and the Color Universe. Uh, is that his newest one? I don't have his newest one. Oh, I know it won't bleed through, Secret. My issue is color smear. <laughs> I, I can't be trusted not to destroy the page by smearing over it. Like even as it is when I'm coloring these books, like it has to be the very last thing that I do. Otherwise I will destroy the page. <laughs> so I'm cool with using gel pens for embellishments, but unless it's like a mandala where it's just like a solid color, I don't think I could bring myself to do an entire page just with gel pens. How many siblings do you have? Wait, who did somebody mention something about siblings? Or are you asking me? I think I missed something about siblings. <laughs> she had to get a passport. That's hilarious. Oh, to Renee. Okay, I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't think we we're talking about my siblings. Hell, universe, but not the. Reflection has too many images I already have. Yeah, so let's see. Color Universe. Are, are, is that one a compilation one also? Oh, her mom told her her birthday was the 20th. That's hilarious. Two, one brother, one sister. Are you the, uh, are you in the middle, Renee? When there's four kids, number two and three, are they technically middle children? And I'm just using the blues and greens that are in the set to kind of go back and forth so we have different coloring. Um, I have some kind of wheat color in here also, but I think we're gonna be layering some of the smoke blue because I don't want it to be completely green. I want there to be a hint of blue in every single one. I have a bunch. I have two sisters and a brother. Yeah. Yeah, you're middle. <laughs> the funny thing is though is like if you say something long enough and it gets in your head like that's just the way it is i mean i literally thought like i turned i turned 38 this year but last year no what was it one of the years i thought i was older oh no no that's what it was i thought that i was already 37 turning 38 but i was actually 36 turning 37 but for an entire year i was telling everybody i was like 37 already and then Steve uh, literally gave me back a year of my life by reminding me that um, I was not, in fact, 37. <laughs> middle of four, two, three year middle, but I feel like the second gets all the struggles. Mm, that's fair, that's fair. I was number three. And there's a pretty big gap between me and my brother. So I definitely had the opportunity to, uh, to be the baby more than my sister did. All right, so I'm just using a little bit of smoke blue over the top. Like I said, I want most of these to kind of have a hint 
of blue and I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're gonna go ahead and use a blender pencil on these as well. Okay, so this one has smoke blue or no, yeah, smoke blue and then Solway blue. There it is, Solway blue. Right, I know he couldn't have gotten me anything better. <laughs> Uh, that's my that's my memory for you. See, does that need to be empty? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Put it in here. I like me my cups. <laughs> there we go. Oldest of six. Yeah, yeah. My parents both came from big families. I don't know. I thought I was gonna have four because that's what my parents had. And I thought that's just what you did. But once I had, you know, I have my boy, I had my girl. I was kind of like, all right, I'm good now. Second oldest from my father's children. 12 years between me and my youngest brother when I was graduating from high school, he was in kindergarten. Oh my gosh, did you ever have any of those instances where people thought that you were the mother? Right, I had two kids, two hands. Kids are expensive these days. Well, they've always been expensive, but still. <laughs> Stuck in the middle with you. See, my father is the oldest of nine, whereas I am the baby. See, there you go. There's something about being able to be the baby, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so I'm just filling in with this smoke blue a little bit. I'm trying not to press too hard because I really don't want to blow through this pencil because it's already kind of short. <clears throat> All right, so let's use some of this Solway blue on the edges. I don't actually remember the exact combinations that I did, but I'm basically alternating between any of the blue ones and any of the green ones in here. And once we use the blender, if I feel like we need more blue in different areas, we can layer on a bit more. I'm almost wondering, like I'm tempted to use white to blend this, but mm, I don't think it'll come out looking the way the way that I want it. Let's see, second oldest of six, one brother and four sisters because I was a Brady Bunch fan. We were growing up with six siblings. I wanted six children. I have three girls and three boys. See, there you go. Eh, we get on all kinds of topics, <laughs> right, Charlotte? <laughs> We color, but then we also, you know, there's a reason it's a it's a color in chat. Sometimes we go off on tangents. You know, I think I want to add just a little bit of the indigo, not indigo, the uh, the ink blue on here, just a bit. <laughs> yep, it always leads into more conversations, especially when there's not a whole lot. You know, I'm not switching between a ton of pencils. It's just the same kind of blues and greens, and I'm just sort of layering it. So. Uh, yeah, there's not a lot of tutorial <laughs> to fill it with. Oh, I'm sorry about that, but the, yeah, there's there's a lot of families around here. We definitely have some topics that we uh, that we steer steer away from here, but uh, yeah, I mean, we all got one. At least I got one. I don't know. <laughs> all right, so we're using the uh, the ink blue here. Let's go ahead and use a little bit more of this uh, well do I want to here's the thing I'm going against my instincts to use more of the smoke blue because it's a shorter pencil and because they're softer I could blow through it so super fast so I'm trying to be careful on the way I or, you know how much of it I actually use so let's actually grab the um, let's see Oh wait, what's what's 63? Hang on. I was the baby grandkids. I was number 63 of grandkids. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Oh, 14 kids. Okay, that makes more sense now. <laughs> All right, we can zoom in a little bit now while we're blending with this. Is that too bright? We'll see. All right, let's go ahead and use our blender. We're gonna try and kind of burnish the paper, smooth it out, and let's see what kind of colors we get. Cause I don't want it like super, super dark, but I do want a solid color. <laughs> well, I mean, thankfully it wasn't all from, from the same person. <laughs> Let's 
See these areas where it's getting a little bit more heavy blue and it's not as smooth, I think we'll use um, the Chinese white to kind of smooth it out. Because I will say like the blender doesn't move things around too much. So if you have a spot with heavier, uh, heavier pigment, then it can um, sometimes look a little uneven. So then when you use something like the Chinese white or a Prismacolor white, it can kind of smooth it out. So yeah, let's do that. Uh, where's the brush? Okay, so now let's go ahead and use the Chinese white. There you go, do you see how that's kind of, oh, I realized I went down and out of frame. Okay, you see how that's kind of like really heavy? So we're gonna use this white, we're gonna use this white to kind of smooth the edges of this but it's nice because we don't have to use a ton of white to kind of get it to where we want it to be. But yeah, I thought that was really cool for the coloring contest where it's not color the whole page, but literally just color that one small little one. And the fact that she offered it as, well, I was trying to think, was that page a free download early on? I feel like it was. Because I see that Barbara's um, been sharing her videos from that page. And I want to say that was a page that was done before the book came out. My mom was born. Her oldest was married. Had kids of her own. Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Oh, no, Callie. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like that. We're... Okay, I keep going out of frame. We're just gonna, we're gonna keep the whole thing here. I just feel like that's a little bit more accurate. It's so hard getting like accurate lighting. There we go, that's better. Yes, you submit on her website, yes. <laughs> Callie. Yeah, she's got a whole gallery page. And usually it, uh, she creates a gallery specifically for that book. And what's gonna be cool is because it's any of those on that page, uh, there's literally gonna be all different ones on there. But my plan, and I didn't wanna like say it's exactly what I was gonna be doing on Instagram because I didn't know if I was gonna be able to commit to it considering how busy everything's been. But my hope, my hope and my plan is to post a reel of color in one of those houses um, every day until it's done. Ooh, Marcy. Nice. I know, right? Go, Marcy, go. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so we're going to smooth these out. I think what we might do when we have all of our background done, I think we'll do kind of almost like a, a vignette effect where the corners are a little bit darker. Oh, awesome, Callie, where the corners are a little bit darker, almost kind of framing it even more. Not really heavily, though, just something kind of light. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking that. <laughs> okay, so... I did the 10 minute one because I know that a lot of people are like, oh, there's no way to get it done in 10 minutes or like it's really intimidating. So I did that. But what you didn't hear in my head, uh, what you didn't hear in my head was um, I was panicking a little bit because at first I was like, because in my head I plan out. Oh, I did. I did. But when I look at an image, I kind of plan out and I think, oh, you know, this would look nice or this would look nice. And I have a list of things that I want to do. And 10 minutes, when you think about it, seems like, oh, that's plenty of time to, a little bit, that's plenty of time to add all these little details and everything. And I kept glancing up at the clock and everything, thinking like, okay, I've got a few more minutes, six more minutes, that's plenty of time. And here I am thinking, okay, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. I look up, I got a minute and a half to go, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> So the very end of it might have had a little bit less effort than the other ones, but it was also like a slightly larger one. These smaller ones, I get those done in 10 minutes just fine. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> no, I absolutely was. I was panicking. I was like, oh my gosh, 10 minutes is so much more shorter than I thought. <laughs> I'm like, it's got to fill in all the spaces. The poor mailbox just got like, here, where is it? Let's see, which page was it? It was, uh, hang on, hang on. There's so many like half done things in here. I like specifically chose a slightly larger one uh, because, because I was like, oh, we can definitely do that. I wanted to show how possible it was. <laughs> I might have underestimated it just a little bit. My my want to add detail, I was I was fighting it a lot. Oh my gosh, where is? Oh wait, was that it? Ha! <laughs> there it is. There it is. So in my head, yeah, this is this is Johanna's. Uh, in my head, I was like, oh, I can add so much more shadow to it, like. <laughs> They were, yeah, I had many plans, and then the poor mailbox just was like, nope, color block, <laughs> I'm out of time. <laughs> I finished a 10-year challenge, right? <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah, it was a little, um, ooh, what are you coloring? <laughs> Thanks, Britt. But I was just like, this just seemed a lot easier than it was. <laughs> Oh, just a, just a little bit of panic, but it's cool. We made it. We did it. <laughs> oh, but it was a good time. It was a good time. There was something else I was going to tell you guys, and now I forgot it. I swear, this is the story of my life. Like, we were on our way to uh, Steve's work this morning, and I'm sitting there in the passenger seat, and I'm just like, I'm holding my phone, and I literally say to him, like, I was going to look something up. I don't. I don't remember what I was going to look up. <laughs> Thanks, Brit. <laughs> like, it's just literally like, oh, okay. That was a thing. Oh, my brain, my brain. Okay, so I had a little bit of the darker green here. Let's add a little bit more, and then we'll add some of the smoke blue. It's It was definitely a, a bit of a challenge, for sure. <laughs> There you go. The funny thing is, is if I remember correctly, Barbara also did something similar uh, on her live stream where she gave herself 10 minutes. And it's it's a lot harder than it seems when you uh, when you want to add all the extras. Right. Also. OK, so Steve and I were talking about potentially you remember that game that I showed you guys the uh, the colors and hues game. OK, so I played it a little bit more with Steve and the kids the last couple of days. And I realized there's a problem. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this with I lost. Now we didn't play a full round of game because the kids were headed to bed, but we were just gonna check it out. So we just played a couple rounds where everybody got a chance to uh, you know throw out throw out color names and guesses and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so we just did a couple rounds, but I lost, which is uh, I have not. No, I have not. <laughs> which is why you would think like color is literally my job. See so you five minutes <laughs> for a piece of candy. <laughs> right? um, and so I realized the problem, though, is so because because we tested it after the kids went to bed. Steve and I just played the game, just him and me. And he would tell me. So the idea of the game is that you have the, this color card with four different colors on it and they match a part on the board. Right. So he would give me words that he would think describe uh that he would think describes this color right and so then what i did is i talked through like i forget what did he choose he chose like let's just say rust for instance um i would talk through my choices of why i chose uh like a color like why why this fits you know like pistachio pistachio i see is a warmer green than a cooler green not necessarily the nut itself, but I think of like pistachio ice cream, right? Um, but anyway, we went through the whole thing and I realized that the issue was it wasn't that I was bad at the game. It's that I, I overthunk it, I suppose. I, I, I overthought it. 
Because, like, I'm telling him my reasoning for choosing the color that I'm choosing based on, because the way that it is, is you give one word. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not. He just doesn't see what I see because, like, color is a thing that I deal with on a daily basis. Like, if I were to go into his field, I'd be like, oh, hey, look, that's a chipped rock. And he'd be like, uh, actually, that's chert, and it was used to sharpen an arrowhead within this certain range, right? I wouldn't know all of that. Hi, Michelle. I wouldn't know all of that. I would just be like, oh, hey, look, it's a rock. And so that's kind of what it is. So we had a funny idea because I wish, oh my gosh, if I could get Barbara, Claire, and Suzanne and me, somehow we all had a copy of the game and we played it, we would have so much fun because like Claire, for instance, and I think even like Suzanne and Barbara, but like Claire is really good at recognizing Prismacolor colors. Right? Rocks rock. Exactly. Oh, I've learned a lot more. I've learned a lot more about them. <laughs> um, but Claire really knows her Prisma colors. Like she can recognize, I think parrot green is her favorite color. Um, and so I feel like it would be so much fun to play that game with them, with us all having uh, a similar vision of color because we see things a certain way. Right? And I'm realizing somebody earlier mentioned, um, uh, 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 the, the, not the gel sticks, Shannon, not the King Art gel sticks. What are the other ones? The, it's Faber-Castell, Gelatos. Gelatos? Yeah, it was Gelatos, right? Somebody, I thought, mentioned that in chat earlier. I think that might actually be wise to use for the vignette on the outside. Gelato, thank you. Sorry, I had a random thought. My brain is all over the place. But anyway, obviously that's, that's... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> obviously, bye, Secret. Oh, wait, does that say bye? Yes. Okay. Bye, Secret. Thanks for being here. Um, obviously, that's not very practical because it's just like a single copy of the game. I wish there was some sort of online game uh, version. Right? It's here. Have a good time. But Steve thought it would be funny if I can figure out how to fit the whole board under the camera, right? Uh, Steve thought that it would be funny if he and I played the Hughes and Clues game on stream. I feel like maybe if I were to take a picture of it and like print it out, but also printing isn't going to create the same kind of color as it would normally. Um, maybe we could use gelatos. You know, I'm going to test something. I'm going to test something all the time, Chris, all the time. <laughs> this is literally like my motto. All right. I'm actually not going to do the gelatos because I want to keep going with this set that I have because I don't want somebody to be following along with these and then be like, well, wait a minute, I don't have those. How am I supposed to do that? So we're going to we're going to test this out here. So we're going to make this corner a little bit darker. But yeah, it was just really interesting to see like what he thinks about certain colors and the kids were surprisingly good at it. But here's the thing. It's also surprisingly hard to come up, I guess we can zoom in since we're just doing this color, to come up with words. So the way that the game works is you draw a card, like I said, and it's a like a hex grid of colors and somebody gives a one word clue and then you place your little piece on what you think that color is based on that one word clue. Then after everybody places it, you can place another or they, they give another two word clue. They can't reuse any of the words they used previously. Um, and then, you know, whoever gets closest gets gets the points. But here's the kicker is that you can't use words like red, blue, yellow, green. <laughs> uh, so much of <laughs> you can't use words like r yellow, red, blue, green, all of that uh, to try and describe your words. So you need to come up with you need to come up with, you know, creative like I did. Um, uh, I had a purplish color. And so like for my two word clue, I said McDonald's Grimace, right? The dude's very purple, very purple, but I can't say purple. So you have to get creative with how you word it. And I swear that's the hardest part because for me, I had a green color and it was a dead ringer for Kelly Green, right? Now, were I to say Kelly Green to Steve, he would not know what that indicates. Nothing about the word Kelly indicates what shade of green this is. But the other kicker is, is I can't say the word green. So it's like, but then I get Kelly green stuck in my head and I'm like, I don't know how else to phrase this. 
<laughs> and so I just sit there frozen like, I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> so you'd think, you'd think I'd be really good at that game. But it's so much harder. It's so much harder. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. But it's so fun, too. We haven't been able to play a full game yet because, you know, the kids have still been sick and everything. But uh, I'm hoping, hoping to do that soon. I don't know. Have any of you guys ever played that game before? It's been really interesting to learn. Absolutely. And we are going to be smoothing that out, by the way. It is. Oh my gosh. I was telling Steve, like, I can only imagine how much fun it would be if, like, we could have, like, a party with a bunch of, like, other artists. Like, it would be great. It would be so much fun. Okay, let's try the blender first and see how that smooths it out. I'm telling you, I cannot get the lighting right tonight. It is not as washed out as it is, I promise. Oh, no worries. Uh, it's called... What was it? Hues and cues. Right, Aspie? It almost is because they were doing better than me. I finally just simplified it down to <laughs> if I could think of a Pokemon that was that color, because of course I'm playing with the kids. <laughs> I know, right, Kara? <laughs> that was the other thought too, and I'm just like, PZ929! <laughs> but that won't work either. Let's see, let's try a little bit of the Solway blue on top of it. Yeah, the numbers would be just fine. <laughs> like, can I bring my color chart, please, and color match it? Can I do that? So yeah, I think my issue is, is that I just think about it too much. But I've gotta try and figure out some way we can play it on stream or just like Steve and I or something. I think you guys would get a kick out of it. Brother and I used to clean up at a taboo, clean up at taboo because of shit, taboo, taboo because of shared references. So I expect that would be awesome with artists, right? Exactly. <laughs> Possibly, but see, so you have to get, you have to get creative. So you also can't use the words light or dark or lighter or darker. I might have pushed the edge a little bit with pale. I did use the word pale. Um, but like, for instance, Steve used the word teal. All right. So for me, teal, I imagine a darker blue green color. Because if it's a lighter teal, then I would use the word aqua. But he chose the word teal and it was this very light blue green color. And I'm just like, that's not teal. <laughs> Good night, Tepeka. Oh gosh. It's just, it's really, it's, it's almost like a social experiment. It's really interesting. Because again, I went in there thinking, oh, this will be great. This will be so easy. Not that easy. <laughs> Okay, so I'm liking this kind of darker curve that we're adding around it. And I think once we get the rest of it done, again, it's super bright. Why can I not find a good balance? Once I get the rest of it done, I think it'll really uh, make it pop. So let's, um, before we do the other vignette on this side, and we may drag this out a little bit more, let's go ahead and work on filling in the rest of it. I mean, literally this whole stream, although these envelopes need to be done still. Guys, don't let me forget to do these envelopes before we finish this page. Um, we are going to need to do the bubbles too, but I haven't thought about how I want to do the bubbles for that yet. But let's dive in with this one here. Mm, let's see. Uh, yeah, we could work up here for a little bit. Watercolors are called teal and it's clearly turquoise. Drives me down, right, Patty? So I'm really having to uh, almost retrain my brain to think, okay, I need to not think of this so, so much. Oh, lanterns, not em that. That actually makes a lot more sense. <laughs> like, you know, maybe it's maybe it's their mail. <laughs> they go buy bird mail. Bird just flies by and you know, takes it. Um, no, you're right. They're absolutely lanterns. That makes so much more sense. Okay, well, to be fair, I mean the back of it looks like envelopes, right? <laughs> Oh, Lord. It's cool. It's me. <laughs> no one is surprised. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> hey, on the plus side, on the plus side, totally uh, switching gears here. We were on our way back to the house this morning and the neighbors were outside with their dogs, but two of them, because there's a number of them that live over there, but two of the people that live there, they were standing like uh, like bouncers at a club between our yard and theirs, keeping the dogs out of, uh, out of our yard. So I think it's safe to assume that my teeny, teeny, tiny, cowardly bit of confrontation has solved the issue. Finn or bushes? Ooh, that's a good question. <sighs> I thought there were bushes initially. So, you know, that's a plus. That's a good question, Ev. I haven't thought to look. <laughs> Who knows? The wind probably blew it off, honestly. It wasn't that big. It was literally like this big. And then the wind probably blew it off, but still. But still, it was it was nice to see that. So... They, they got the subtle hint and uh, things are a little bit more pleasant out there. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do pale cedar here. Or do we want to? No, let's go a little bit darker. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. But it was pleasant to see when we drove up today. I was like, oh, they're making an effort. That's cool. But yeah, it's just been mostly a lot of running around today. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I missed it. They're lantern lobes. Oh my gosh, I love that. I love that. Lantern lobes. <laughs> Out the street and got grass first. It was, oh no. Oh no. Yep, that would do it. Well, our grass has finally, um, you know, they laid down fresh sod and everything. And so our grass has finally taken off. So we ordered. It, it's so funny. I don't like the idea of having to deal with an extension cord or like gas for a mower or anything. And our yard isn't that big, our backyard. And so we actually um, got a push mower, a push mower for the yard. So that arrived the other day. So that is going to be um, my goal for putting together this weekend. Uh, Steve gets really bad. Um, allergies when he's like outside grass and all the pollen and whatever stirring up so uh, as much as he has offered I was just like there's no way I'm letting you go out there to tend to the lawn only to have to be miserable the rest of the day when I am perfectly capable so uh, I've kind of taken on uh, the the lawn care of the yard so uh, so that he doesn't have to so anyway I'm gonna put that again not again I'm gonna put that together this weekend and uh kind of even out because I used our weed eater a little bit which does have an extension cord but it's smaller um anyway I used our weed eater to kind of clean it up a little bit but it was a little uneven so let's see how would I say we did this something similar at the cottage the neighbors kept parking on our property so we planted bushes along the property line see there you go it's the subtle hints that they need sometimes <laughs> okay let's see let's use a little bit of crag green I don't know, does anybody prefer, I know it seems kind of like a silly question, but do you have preferences over like your lawn care tools? Does anybody here ever use a push mower? I think it would be harder if like our yard got really long, but it really doesn't. If we trim it frequently, it shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> no, not anymore, thank goodness. Oh goodness, yeah. Imagine trying to mow that up. No, thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and use the blender. But, you know, push mower, it's good exercise. I'll probably be tired, but, you know, a good kind of tired. I've seen someone use it, it seems to take forever. Zero turn mower. Wait, what's a zero turn mower? I could see that, Melissa, absolutely. I don't doubt that it's going to take a little bit of strength, but you know, maybe it'd be good work out for my arms. But we also have, um, we made sure and got one that had a bag attachment to the back because when I initially weed eated the yard, that was probably the hardest part was raking everything up because it was just everywhere. All right. So I had, oh, a riding, a riding one. I had to push more for my old house. Now I pay the guy next door to mow my yard since it's three times as large as my old yard. Ah, yeah, that'll do it. 
We had to push more two houses ago, roughly 1.5 acres. 1.5 acres? Oh my gosh. Riding mower that turns on a dime. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, see, there you go, Vicky. Oh, a battery mower. Yeah, see, I would think we'll probably need to mow it when we get into the, you know, regular, because like I said, the, the sod is finally taken. We didn't want to, you know, do too much to it until it's had time to settle and everything. I would say maybe once a month. And I would say the size of our yard. I want to say the width is maybe... It's not a car length. No, it's longer than a car length. Maybe a car and a half by a car and a half. Maybe. So it's not giant. Big enough for the kids to play in, but... Ooh, nice, Marcy. Till she's 95 and then my cousin took over. I love that. That's five acres. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just line them up. Um, a lot. Probably a lot. <laughs> Really? Oh, see, last place we lived at, uh, we had somebody like that came and did. Okay, maybe maybe every two weeks. I guess it depends, depends on how much rain we have. Summertime, we won't need to do it all that much. Sun pretty much just cooks the lawn. But that's the way it is for everyone. My granny would weed eat. I love that. My favorite yard tool would be a landscaper planting moss every... Ah, there you go. There was this trend that I saw that I thought was adorable. It wouldn't work for us in Texas, probably, because it just gets too dang hot. But there was somebody that planted clover in their yard, and I just thought that was so pretty. Clover in my yard would make me so happy. I was also thinking the other day how, um, how cool it would be if I found a good time to do like a bunch of um, blue bonnet seeds, there is this field that I drive by when I go to the post office and they've got a pretty good amount of it. But this year when the blue bonnets bloom and if you're unfamiliar with Texas, uh, blue bonnets are a big thing. It is an iconic thing. Everybody goes to take blue bonnet pictures. We didn't this year because honestly, I didn't know where to go here in town. Um, but blue bonnet pictures are a big thing. Everybody goes, takes pictures on them. They're just, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, but, uh, there is this, uh, this, this field that we would drive by. Somebody has got their house on it. Obviously it's private property, but it was kind of on a hill and it was covered in blue bonnets. It was so pretty. And you guys know in me being the extroverted, uh, lady that I am oh I was this close to going and knocking on their door going can I can I go take pictures in your in your field <laughs> in your field that the house was a little sketch so it probably would not have been um the brightest move but dang their flowers were party <laughs> it's to do my yard dude Bob's allergies too we can't at the moment so we have a guy yeah see there you go takes two hours to cut your yard. Did you get that kind of self-propelled? It pulls itself and you just walk behind it. We have three acres that need mowed out of 40. The rest is woods and mountainside. <gasps> Leanne, that sounds gorgeous. And no, I don't think so. I don't think so. It was just a regular push one. Yard is an acre. I have a gardener. Yeah, uh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> Which is hilarious, Renee, because I was born and raised Pacific Northwest. But gosh, we've been here for... Oh my gosh, how long have we been here? been here a long time you guys like not quite 15 years but <laughs> yeah it happens <laughs> yeah i haven't i haven't used that many i really haven't <laughs> i'm just kind of switching back and forth between the blues and the greens and everything but yeah so i'm thinking how pretty would it be I'm all stop, sneeze, mo, rub my eyes, mo, rub <laughs> Color in your whole house. I love it. Okay, so that's the thing. That is the only thing that keeps me from it. I love bees and they're wonderful for the environment. But little Emily is terrified of bees. And I could not do that to her. The amount of just, she wouldn't go in the yard anymore. So, you know, with blue bonnets, they only bloom for about like three or four weeks out of the month. 
So it's like, I could do that. Been in Texas for 42 years. How are you liking it, Vicky? <laughs> That's... Well, that was my ringtone for Steve, but I recently changed up uh, my med schedule and I needed to to not miss it. <laughs> so that's my that's my alarm to uh, to take my meds, but I'm gonna do it after stream. <laughs> but it's that we're taking the hobbits to Isengard because you know I'm classy like that. <laughs> oh no, they did. when she was younger, she got stung by a yellow jacket. Real real good. We were we were visiting my parents who had some property. And she was getting out of a van, but she was getting out the back of the van and she put her hand on the top of it when she got down, but there was a yellow jacket right there and she put her hand on it and it got her so good on the hand. And I mean, yellow jackets hurt. And so now whenever there's bees, yes, it's not good. <laughs> and have no respect of personal space, right? Remember one year my mother made me mow the front yard twice, once going to left, then right. I get it nice and smooth. That'll do it. That'll do it. Um, but yeah, so as much as I like the idea of clover, yeah. Botanist delight boasting every known way <laughs> imaginable. They are rude. They are so rude. Yeah, how old was she at the time? She would have been... Huh? Was it five? She might have been six, five or six, but she was young, young enough that it left a flippin' impression. And yeah, it was it was not good. <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. Hang on, the cat's scratching at the door. One second. Okay, sorry about that. Paul's been into attacking the door lately if it's closed, which just is awesome for it. Are the cicadas coming here? Uh, probably. We usually hear them at some point. The kids are always fascinated when we all when we find um, like one of the husks attached to uh, a window. Oh, are you allergic to bees, Don? Oh, Ev is. Ev's allergic to bees. They swell up and break out in hives. Oh my gosh, you have to do an epipen. Learn from the same source. They're already coming out. They're two times that are merging. Oh my gosh. Well, we don't have a ton of trees around here, so I don't know that we'll get as many of them. Um, but yeah. Okay, how did I balance this? I think we're gonna do the lighter blue here. I'm trying to remember how I planned this all out, because I think actually that's one big one right there. I want to say, it looks like a greenish one. Pale cedar, maybe? Sorry, I'm just kind of talking through my colors. Has bees and collects honey. I have to help them with, especially when there's a hive that has a swarm. I, I get to get dressed in the white bee suit and have videos. Oh, there are some people that I follow. And it's actually been kind of good for little Emily because we've done, not immersion, but we've they, they take care of swarms and they relocate the bees and everything. But it's been interesting for her to to watch without you know being afraid of the bees and i think it's helping her feel a little bit better about them you like no we can do that in one big one i did it so light last time it's almost hard to tell yearly in the seven year did the cicadas come out of the ground originally oh see whenever we heard them where we were at in texas before it was usually by the time they were hanging out in the trees um you know doing their little doing their little wingy wingy vibrating thing <laughs> so yeah we were only usually aware of them once they were in the trees making all kinds of sounds and if that's the case if they come out of the ground then they pro hi tammy they probably won't be in our neighborhood they might be like in other parts of town but yeah we usually hear them when it's pretty dang warm so can you usually see can you usually see where they dig and, and bury themselves? Allergic to bees, wasps. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad that's not the case. And honestly, when that bee stung little Emily, 
we didn't know yet if she had any bee allergies or anything. So like I was watching her like a hawk when it happened because it was just like, I don't know. Because we were visiting them at the time too. So we were out of state. And so it's like, we didn't have a regular doctor. So I just had my fingers crossed and thankfully, thankfully she was fine. I find if you don't bother the bees and wasps, they don't bother you. Very true. Enter the yellow jacket. <laughs> Those things are gnarly, man. But yeah, bees most of the time, I try to get the kiddos to, to just be chill and calm around them. A lot of beekeepers here. The area is famous for our to, 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 to This This word shouldn't be difficult for me to pronounce. To, to pello? To pello honey? Oh, now I'm curious. Uh, yeah, no, Callie, I'm there with you. They will. They will hunt you down. <laughs> Like, they've got a grudge against you, man, for years. I'm just using Solway Blue right now. <laughs> Lantelopes. <laughs> oh, your brother's a beekeeper. See? Oh, red wasps. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Let's see. Let's do a little bit of the smoke blue. Okay. We'll press a little bit harder here. Oh, see, I haven't done like fancy hunt. Well, not fancy. Oh, but. Tu Tupelo. Oh, Tupelo. Okay, that makes more sense. It's so cool to see some of these, especially those beekeepers that like know whether or not the swarm's going to be angry. So sometimes they won't even, um, they won't even wear suits. There's this woman on, I think she's on Instagram too, but I think she's on TikTok. I can't remember. She's in Texas and she does bees, but she always does like this really soothing voiceover. And, and like at the end, she always ends it with, thank you for coming along to helping me to save the bees. <laughs> Yellow jackets, bumblebees, bumblebees look all cute and fuzzy, but those suckers will chase you and not get, what bumblebees? They're like tiny sky pandas. They're so cute. <laughs> They're adorable. I don't think I've ever seen a bumblebee angry. Like they're just the derpiest little bees and I love them so much. They're so cute. I don't know that I've ever made one angry. What does it take to make a bumblebee angry? Do they even have stingers? That's probably a very uneducated comment. I should probably, I should probably look up more info about bumblebees. Then yellow jets nest in the ground, get you when you mow. Oh, I didn't even think about it. See, for us, uh, it's fire ants. Oof. Fire ants are gnarly down here. A mad bumblebee is not a... What do you got to do to make a bumblebee mad? We had three swarms combined into one. There was thousands of bees flying around. It was so exciting to be in the middle of all those bees. Right? And it's... They do have stingers. Okay. I do I like the honey though? So Leanne, when you're in that many swarms, how loud is it? <laughs> I'm not sharing my soda. They get unpleasant, right? I stand still. If I let them sniff me, they leave me alone. Um, yeah. Okay. So fun fact: when I went to go paint that day at the park, I felt so bad. So there were a few bees. You know, I'm outside, right? There's people swimming. There's a water source. Uh, there were a few bees that were floating around. Well, um, my coffee cup, my coffee cup, it looks like a disposable, like little white cup. I don't think they do. Um, it looks like a disposable, uh, white cup that has, you know, the tiny, like the ones you get at Starbucks, right? But it's not, it's, it's a reusable one. And I like it a lot, mostly because my hands can't hold still to save my life. And I don't want to spill my coffee all over me. Anyway, I brought it with me. So essentially there's a slightly like open hole that sits on the top. Constantly wash. Yeah. Right. Um, Amdro. Amdro does wonders for fire ants. Um, anyway, so my coffee cup is sitting there, but I'm also like aware that I'm outside. So every time I go to take a sip, I'm kind of peering in the hole to make sure nothing uh, found its way in there. I felt so bad. Apparently at some point, um, a bee could smell the coffee. I didn't have any other food or anything, but they were somehow able to smell the coffee and they decided to take a swim. And I was like, I found it after it was too late. And I was like, okay, well, we're not going to be drinking that. But <laughs> there was these young, uh, these, well, I say young kids, there were some of the college kids or whatever, but they had this plastic bag full of like Gatorades that they'd opened and everything. 
and they go to pick up their bag and they had left it on the side of the river for probably a solid 15 minutes. They go to pick it up and there's like so many bees on the inside and they're just like freaking out. And I'm just like, just dump out the bag. And <laughs> it'll all leave. <laughs> but yeah, it was a little, little bit of, uh, of uh, trauma for them. <laughs> Let's see. I think I've ever been stung by a wasp or a bee. I've been stuck by stung by one of those uh, red wasps. I was tubing down a river and you know, when those tubes get really hot, um, they, uh, they're attracted to the heat. They really are, Vicky. Oh, they do, I didn't know that. I'm a country girl from Eastern Kentucky. I've done all kinds of stuff and have- <gasps> Eaten? What? Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I, I can't, yeah, me and bugs, man. That's just, that's one of my big nopes. I won't live with them. I won't hang out with them. Like none of that. <laughs> oh, you laid in it. Please tell me that like the kitten didn't like run further and hide and like it was at least worth all of the bites, but you laid in it. Oh, was it like your torso or your legs? Like, what are we talking here? I'll occasionally, like, I was out sanding some stuff that I was uh, DIYing for the house. And, like, the next day I realized I'd been bit by, like, a single fire ant. But, yeah. And even, like, the healing afterwards. It's always so gnarly the next day. Using a... What? Renee! <laughs> oh, your right arm? Hang on. He's getting at the door again. One second. Okay, sorry. Cat chaos. I didn't see the mound. So here's the next question, Shannon. Had you known the mound was there, would you have done it anyway? Or were there alternative routes? <laughs> yeah, what if... I used to get stung by sweat. Wait, what are sweat bees all the time? But I didn't have a major reaction. Oh, hang on, hang on, I scrolled up. Didn't have a major reaction until my sister pushed me into... Oh. Oh my gosh, they made a movie about that, Ev. Doesn't she know? And it ended very sadly. <laughs> oh. oh, my scones. No, absolutely not. Oh, pine green, pine green. <laughs> I would have chosen a different path. I suppose so. Oof. Yeah, no, I'm, I'd rather, I'd rather be around. I'll take the kitten that Shannon, uh, that Shannon saved. I'll hang out with that one. Yeah. Now, I haven't been stung too many times. Um, I usually keep like a Benadryl stick with me in, in my bag for the kids because, you know, occasionally there was some insect that bit little Steve like on his leg when we went to a park. And all he said is that it was big. He tried to draw us a picture of it later, but thankfully the, uh, the, the Benadryl stick worked. But like it's great for fire ants when the kids like when we used to take them. Um, they don't go to parks as often now because they're they're older. Um, but when they were little, little, and they weren't in school yet, you know, we took them to the parks all the time. But yeah, fire ants, fire ants are probably the biggest thing down here. That's that's no fun, as far as you know, a regular potential risk. Okay, so we're doing this green here. Let's add a little bit of the wheat. Let's see, that's yellow ochre. Where is wheat? Is this the wheat? Yes, wheat. I didn't know there were different kind of bees for that. Okay. And then let's add a little bit of the smoke blue. Wasting so we keep some of them around. 
Mm, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, we've had conversations with the kids about um, spiders in general, because like, even if they see a daddy long leg, they freak out. But I was like, no, 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 no. These are the good spiders. We don't mind being roommates with these ones because they're going to help keep any critters out. It's always like those cats in the videos that you see where they're like, you're either afraid of the mouse, so they're just hanging out with the mouse, and it's like, you have one job! <laughs> just the apple trees? Yeah, those blossoms. Exactly. Right, the fur baby babies appreciated the sacrifice. Oh my gosh, kittens are so cute. And they're so snuggly. Part of me has been tempted with this whole watercolor or just painting thing that I'm doing in general. I have been tempted to like attempt fur, but I'm also like aware that like if I do, if I choose something that's too hard, then it's not gonna be enjoyable. So I'm like, all right, we're gonna start out slow. Okay, let's let's master the things that we're working on. Then well, because honestly, fur, fur is probably my biggest challenge when it comes to like coloring or artistry of any kind. Darvin, hello. All right, let's go ahead and use the blender pencil on this one here. I think this one as well. I don't think we've used the white on this one. I feel like this one's a little bit too flat. We may add a little bit more indigo to it. Are they really? I didn't think they were at all. They're literally, that's just one of those dudes that like hangs out in the corner of your house and like gets flies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was downstairs today and um, uh, Paul was kind of like going nuts by the door and I thought he was just attacking my curtains because he, uh, he <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. Um, and he had gotten his like claws hooked in them and everything. And I went over to go look and I'm, I'm about ready to be like, Paul, knock it off, you know, like get him, get him away. Oh, Kathleen. You redeemed your square. See, I changed my uh, alerts in my headphones so that I can I can actually hear when they go off. Hang on, we're gonna refresh. Refresh. There it is. <gasps> nice. Yay! I'll be doing some squares this weekend, so I'll make sure to get to it. Congrats. You have your eye on any uh, on any specific uh, add-ons. <laughs> Do you really, Shannon? <laughs> That's hilarious. Hi, Alex. How are you? Fur is tough. Oh, wait, wait. Did Durbin say something about fur up there? I missed it. Hang on. Yeah, nice chat. Durbin. Oh, Durbin says I love doing fur. <laughs> Son today saw spider saying itsy bitsy touch the spider. Spider climbs on him and <laughs> freaking out. Oh, my God. Really, Aspie? I had no idea. I just assumed they were like part of the uh, part of the world of cuddly spiders. I'm guessing they're not as cuddly as I thought. They're just not a threat to us. Is that all it is? <laughs> really? <laughs> Every now and then, um, so here in Texas, we have, well, and they're, they're kind of everywhere. It's a Southern thing. Um, the green uh, anole lizards there, I think they're also like Carolina anole. Like they're just basically these little lizards uh, that can camouflage. Well, you know, Isis is our, is our old lady kitty. She uh, doesn't really go after things all that much, especially these days, but this was probably like a decade ago. Anyway, one had gotten into the apartment they were living in. It was just a lizard. And the only reason that I knew it had gotten in is because she had snatched its tail. Now, that's what they do. Like, they they will grow them back. Like, that's their first, you know, oh, escape. And But she was, like, looking at something under our bed. And then I see this thing on the ground. I was like, what did you get? <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. Okay, cat. Eh, nice, Alex. Ah, okay, that'll do it. Banana spiders. Those things are pretty gnarly, too, aren't they? All right, we're going to use just a little bit of white here. I want to lighten the middle part of this one since it's the kind of largest of the waves. Oh, that's cool. 
The Poppy War. What's that one about? I'm sort of in between books. I'm re-listening to um, uh, the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. That one is just, it's so good. It's so good. I'm telling you, that man, he writes so many books and that's like, there's always something new. But always a good thing. All right, let's add just a little bit more of the smoke blue. They're so good, Angela. Like they're definitely, they, they are a fantasy series, but like he doesn't do if he does do any kind of romance like it just barely touches on it so it's definitely it's a different it's like a palette cleanser fantasy <laughs> oh it's a trilogy i gotcha <laughs> like spiders outside inside it becomes a war right really now to be fair when i first started brandon sanderson it was the mistborn series and i felt like it just started so slow it started so slow but I think it helped that I listened to the audiobooks because, you know, it got you into the characters and everything. So I could see that, though. The Wounded Kingdom trilogy. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, same. Yeah, I prefer fantasy. Absolutely. Gets me out of fantasy, but I love fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you just need that kind of like, okay, I love this, but I need a break kind of thing. Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> I have not. What is it about the uh, the Way of Kings that you had a hard time with? He's actually, um, I don't know if he's finishing the series, but Way of Kings 5 is coming out soon. I uh, called my brother to let him know. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Let's do Solway Blue on this one. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. <sighs> see, I like... I don't know. I used to enjoy like mysteries and somewhat thrillers. What was the thriller that you read? But then again, my mysteries were like Nancy Drew, the original series. So maybe that doesn't count. I do like a good Sherlock. Visiting family in Florida and a gecko got in the house, was on the ceiling, had hubby use a broom to knock him into a cup I was holding up. Ended up in my hair. My knees started screaming. <laughs> right? It was easy to get into Mistborn. Maybe I ought to try. Yeah, Audible for Way of Kings is really good. Um, I would say I liked, I think I liked Kaladin's storyline the best. Now that I've re-listened to the books multiple times, sometimes I'll skip ahead just to listen to Kaladin's portions of the story. Um, I know some people felt like there wasn't enough growth with the Shallan character and just some of the other ones. But I think what people forget is although it's taken him years to write these, in book timeline, not that much time has passed. And so there's still a lot of stuff that the characters need to go through and experience. Uh, I kept doing suspense thrillers and they are not my kind of thing. So I drove. No, that's fair. Growth smooth. <laughs> right? But it's it's good. It's really good. And they just get better as they go along. I'm probably going to reread uh, uh, Stormlight 4. Here's the thing. With, with Brandon Sanderson's books, like there were things I didn't catch the first or even the second time that I read it. But now that I remember it, because that's the other thing is I have horrible like reading retention. Like, sure, I've listened to, you know, The Hobbit and all the way through. Do I still go to Steve with all of my Lord of the Rings questions and, and Hobbit questions? Absolutely. But it's because I have a really hard time retaining what I read. Reading a book and it's giving you nightmares. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm listening to Miss Born now, and this is probably going to be my fourth time going through it. But it's like every time I read it again, I have no problem rereading it because I, like, pick up on things. But, like, the second time I listened to, um, uh, like, even Miss Born or Way of Kings, it was like, oh, okay. Now all of this early stuff makes so much more sense. <laughs> I think I'll pass on that one. Cozy Mysteries, listening to four different ones. That's awesome. The funny thing is, is because I started my Audible journey out with Brandon Sanderson's books, whose books are like 45 hours long on Audible, when I started going back to other books and they were only 25 hours or, or whatever else, I was thinking, 
man, I feel like I'm not getting, you know, my money's worth out of these books because they were only 25 hours. And here I am with Brandon Sanderson, 45, 53, like so many. And then I, I had to realize that, oh, Brandon Sanderson's kind of a league of his own. He has this whole own category that's like eons long. <laughs> Frank Herbert's Dune saga. Uh, is that Dune like the, the movie that just came out? Well, I know it's the second movie, but. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> any any insect that makes its home in my home is is not in my home for long. I, I cannot abide living with any kind of insect like at all, which is why I was so thrilled when Paul caught that house fly earlier. Even fruit flies, man. We do the um, apple cider vinegar fly trap for them. I don't know if you guys have done that where you take a jar and you put apple cider vinegar in it and then you put a piece of plastic with like little holes. Gosh, I don't know if YouTube's going to flag me for this. But anyway, the point is they're attracted to the vinegar. They fly in. They can't fly out. And voila, no more fruit flies. <laughs> Tried to redo and I can get through the first page. I was debating about it. I've also been hearing a lot about and this one kind of goes back to I don't know if it's more similar to like Akatar in the sense of spice or whatever, but I keep hearing about Zodiac Academy. The other Tolkien books? Well, so I did the Lord of the Rings series. I did The Hobbit. I have not done like the Silmarillion or anything, but it's all kind of in that same universe. So he, I haven't looked into what other books he's done. And honestly, like there were parts of the book that I really struggled with. I mean, because these were written a long time ago, an entirely different style. Um, and so I struggled with it a little bit in some parts. Oh my gosh, Tom Bombadil. First of all, I get why they cut him out of the movies because it just moved so slow, like the pace of when they were with Tom Bombadil. And, and as much as I love Andy Serkis, I do not want to hear him singing anymore. <laughs> so I had the love of Lord of the Rings to keep me intrigued with what he had done. But I think if I was going in there with not knowing anything about the storyline, I think I would struggle with his books. Yeah, bad dreams. Yeah, that's fair. Spice what? Tell me again. <laughs> well, you know, like uh, like uh, Court of Thorns and Roses and, and you know, basically anything Sarah J. Mess, you know, spice books. <laughs> Fruit flies. I tried so many things. Fruit flies are gnarly. Yeah. Tried the vinegar, but really honey does more, draw more flies than vinegar. Mm, that's fair. Sliced tomatoes. I didn't even think about that. Oh, Zodiac Academy. I've been hearing a lot about it and I feel like, wasn't there a show or something? But it is fantasy and I want to look into it because everybody keeps talking about it. Love that Joan Fluke included the recipes. Wait, Joan Fluke. Oh, sweet. I need to figure out. Oh, you made it. You made it to 4,000. So if you go to, um, if you type in exclamation point loyalty, it'll take you to the store. You do have to log in with your, with your YouTube. We discovered that. But that's just so it can link your points that you've earned here. And then you just pick what you want and fill in the boxes. And then it gets sent on over to me. Sounds good, Renee. I've read 144 books so far. Slow for me, but major surgery, the flu, fibromyalgia has really slowed me down. Uh, yeah, I don't blame you on that one. Um, are you read reading them or are you listening to them? Because it's it's only April. How are I mean, how many days have been in the year so far? <laughs> now I actually want to know. How have you done 144? Oh, no, Ev. Oof. We'll, we'll go find him and make him give the books back. <laughs> All right. I think this one. Okay. I need to turn this on silent. I had, I've had it on for like days because, you know, little Emily, if she needs me, she gets in touch with me, but. No, no, it's actually like, so Umbrella ooh, Umbrella Academy is the show I was thinking of. Let me, let me look it up real quick. Oh, it would help if I could type. Uh, let's see. Zodiac Academy. I don't know anything about it. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm going to file this under definitely a romance. Again, I hadn't looked into it yet. I just kept hearing the title. But the description on Amazon 
<laughs> the description just in the title on Amazon is Zodiac Academy, The Awakening, an Academy Bully Romance. And I'm like, oh, well, uh, that, <laughs> that answers my question. 122 days into 2024. Biblio, that's flipping amazing. Reading in text to speech so that I can work on my jigsaw puzzle simultaneously, but then I read in bed each night on my Kindle paper. Ah, uh, okay, but still, that's impressive. Let's see, I can't, I don't remember my YouTube name. It's whatever email you use to sign in with this current account, Alex. So your Alex Brock account, that's what you sign in with. And there's no rush, honestly. Like if you want to take your time like later and figure it out, you can, you don't have to redeem uh, while I'm live. 110 days here, 109 for you guys. Okay, gotcha. The Hannah Swenson movies are way different than the books. What are the uh, Hannah Swenson books? Clue this year is bad. My cousin's been down a week. See, that's the thing. So the kids, I'm almost wondering because they had they had identical Cinderella have little Emily still getting over it. They they had like identical symptoms and we did take little Steve in to go get tested for the flu, but their fevers never went up above 102 and when we did take him in they're like even if it is the flu it's already too far along for and he can't have time of flu anyway. So we're just like, well, okay, I guess I guess that's that and then little Emily came down with a week later, but both of them, I mean She's she's been out of school all week. So both of them were out for the entire week. So it's just I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they had, though. But everything was manageable. You know, with kids, it's usually always just something viral, anything. And everything was manageable with, uh, you know, Motrin and Tylenol. And obviously, you know, if we felt concerned, we'd take them into the doctor. But, um, you know, we took little Steve and it was literally the exact same thing as little Emily. So she should be feeling better by Monday. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But yeah, it's going, it's going around. Amazingly though, uh, Steve and I are, are fine. So um, yeah, clearly it was something that when, you know, younger kiddos without full immune systems were a little bit more prone to. <gasps> Kara, yay! Ooh, we've got so many. I'm gonna be doing all the quilt squares and I'm so excited to get everybody's up there. I'm gonna refresh it. I wanna look, I wanna look. Let's see, hand stitched, very nice, very nice. <laughs> I'm excited. See, I gotta look up for some uh, creative fonts. Like I said, I wanna do each one, each one different, like not all the same font. Get creative with it. That's awesome. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, because I have Brit's, uh, Brit's blank square here. So I'm going to be working on them this weekend. I'm hoping I'll, have, I'll be all caught up with them by Wednesday. That's the plan. That being said, as we get further along and more and more get redeemed, I will probably most definitely be exercising that, um, uh, uh, you know, one to, two, one to two weeks. A flu shot every year. But the day I was being discharged from the hospital after having my six back surgery, I told the doctor, I felt really weird, so they did the flu COVID, and it was, yep, yep, that's exactly it. Uh, loyalty, loyalty, uh, uh, singular. That's how it goes, though, right? Like, that was, with, that was like me with meningitis. Like, I kept going in and telling them, like, something is not right. Like, this is not the norm. Like, they tested me for absolutely everything else. And then finally, they're like, well, we run the test for everything. You want to check and see if you got meningitis? And I'm like... Okay. Run the test. 20 minutes later, they come back. Uh, yes, I did for this one because I wanted the border. They come back and they're all masked up. And this is before COVID. So, you know, masks everywhere was kind of a weird thing. And they're like, yeah, well, you got meningitis. I'm like, can you say that any more flippantly? Like, am I going to die? Can you please, like, let me know? This is like, you hear the M words. Like, this isn't, this isn't like a walk in the park. Can we just... <laughs> Anyway, I didn't. I survived. Still not fun. Zero out of ten. Would not recommend. <laughs> oh, Lord. That was a fun year. But, uh, but yeah. Sometimes figuring that out, like what is going on with you is, is sometimes the hardest part. 
How did we manage? Oh gosh. Well, for about a week leading up to it, I was sick. Like I was sick, like I had the flu or a cold or something. Like it was really gnarly. And at one of the worst points of it, um, little Steve was young enough that he, uh, that he was still at home with me. Like he wasn't in school full time. And at one point, like I, I practically fainted in the bathroom. Like I sat down before I actually fainted, but like, I couldn't get up. And so I actually, you know, little Steve was little, little. He must have been three, maybe, maybe four. Good night, Don. And I was laying there, like on the floor, and I literally had to have him come over and I had to explain to him, like, I need you to get mommy's phone. Like, can you get mommy's phone? So I did. And I called Steve and went to the doctor. They ran the test and they're like, oh, you're fine. I'm like, I literally fainted. Like, something is not normal. So anyway, the day goes on, I'm back at home and you know, they've got me, you know, on medicines or whatever. I think they started an antibiotic to see if that was it or something. And I remember it was around midnight and thankfully at the time I had some, right? A little bit. Yeah, I was going for something wavy. Um, at the time I lived in an apartment complex and thankfully my best friend lived downstairs. And so it was midnight and I knew I could call her. So I called her up and I was like, hey, I've got this going on. Uh, no, not a shot. Alex! Yay! Oh my gosh, I love this. Let's see, let's take a look at the re refreshing the list here. <gasps> Yay! Congrats, Alex! <laughs> I know there is one, but I, I hadn't ever gotten one at any point. Um, so I called my best friend and I was just like, hey, I know it's midnight, but something is not right. You know, Steve's taking me to the ER. And it was at that point that, um, you know, they ran all the tests and I had went ahead and sent Steve home because, you know, my friend also had small children of her own. So, you know, I was at the hospital by myself and they ran basically every, every test that you can think of to try and figure it out. And it was literally that like, well, we've tried everything else. Do you want to, do you want to test for meningitis? And I'm like, well, not really, but okay. So to test for meningitis, they have to do a um, lumbar puncture. Well, the girl that they had to do it, like she had to do it twice before she actually got it right. And also some of you that have been here a while probably heard this story before, but... <laughs> So what happens it's like when you're married for a long time you tell all the stories um but anyway so yeah then he came back in and he's like so it's meningitis but so there's viral meningitis and bacterial meningitis bacterial meningitis is the really bad one viral meningitis basically what happened is i did in fact have some sort of flu or cold or whatever and without getting into too many details to make anyone uncomfortable basically that virus inspect not inspected in infected my spine and it went from there uh the purple square can do um and so i ended up being in the hospital for about three solid days and this is one of the reasons because this was a uh, fall of 2019 right this was fall of 2019 well we all know what happened spring of 2020 so you better believe after that experience at the hospital because i was in there for three days and like, I have migraines and headaches all the time. A meningitis headache is unlike anything I have ever experienced. Green, ooh, I'm gonna write these down real quick. Hold on, hold on. All right, Alex. Alex wanted purple. And Kathleen, green. Okay, perfect. Um, but it like the best way that I can describe it is imagine somebody hands you a hat and that hat is completely lined with the worst migraine you've ever experienced. And then they put the hat on you and can't take it off. <laughs> like I just, I had this kind of come to realization moment when it happened that, and again, I know I've mentioned this before on stream, but when you're a kid and you go to the doctor, you assume that if you're sick, you go to the doctor and the doctor fixes you. But the reality of that is when you're adult is when you realize that doctors can't fix everything. And that night when I was having that just monstrous pain, they had literally, excuse me, uh, they had literally given me everything they could possibly give me. There was nothing else they could give me to get me through this. It was literally up to my body to fix this. And it was just that feeling of almost like helplessness because you knew there was nothing else. You just, you had to wait. And so then, you know, you get through all of that. Yeah, it'll fit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I can always change the size of the lettering and everything. So yes, it'll fit. 
um, you know, COVID hit after that. So needless to say, uh, when, you know, all the reports were coming out of, hey, there's this horrible thing and we don't know how to fix it. <laughs> Ta-da! Um, needless to say, I got really nervous about COVID. I was not, uh, I was not feeling that, not that a lot of people were, but I was definitely one of the more paranoid ones, but it's because I had so recently uh, experienced that because like I was weak. I lost so much weight. I remember I was back in time to be able to do trick or treating with the kids, but that was like my first Audi and I had done since I got back and I literally had to walk with a cane. Like it was insane. Oh, it was, it was absolutely terrible. Um, won't forget that anytime soon but it was just like here's the thing i know nobody in my life that has ever had meningitis like who gets meningitis like it's it's insane it's absolutely insane um and it's just like of all the things of all the things and i mean i get why the why the doctors didn't like pinpoint it initially because i mean again who gets meningitis? Like, it's the craziest thing, right? Anyway, needless to say, I, I would not want to <laughs> go through that again. So, yeah. But, I, you know, I've come, to, I've come to terms with a lot of it now. And, you know, it's just another... It was, it was a good long while ago that it happened. And we made it through and everything. But um, we definitely had a lot of help from friends. And uh, like I said, I was in the hospital for a little while. So it was just kind of, I know that Steve took some time off work so that he could, you know, take the kids to and from where they needed to go for school and all that stuff. But it was mostly just recovery time. But um, I mentioned that my best friend lived uh, in the same complex as us. Well, I also had another best friend who lived in the parking lot across. It was great because we all had kids close to the same age. And so like weekly, we get together for coffee. We even have mugs made. <laughs> with our phase of, we've all since moved and and we go on to uh you know we've all gone into different phases of our life but at the time they both lived in the same apartment complex and they were a massive help through just the whole thing and yeah recovery was mostly just the longest for it gets old being told you're crazy you're seeking attention yeah right durbin absolutely yeah it's it's not it's not thrilling. I, I like to try and avoid those if I can, if at all possible. Obviously, they do good because if I didn't have, you know, some of the medicine that I did, I'd be in worse shape. But still, medical girl gets so much more complicated when you're older, right? Oh, my gosh. It's 942. It's 942. Okay. I don't know that I'll get all of this done, but I do want this to be our last stream with this page. Here's what we're going to do. Because I still have stuff to go on this side. Let's shift gears a little bit. Let's move back over to the left side. Let's finish the vignette here, okay? And then we'll do the bubbles so that if you're following along, you'll have you'll have everything you need to finish the page. Cancel my MRI, so I have to go to the doc again for a follow-up to verify that it's still, oh gosh. Oh, that's a pain. Have you really? Did they have, did they have viral or was any, I don't know how many people survive bacterial. I don't even know. I know it's, I know it's, uh, not great, <laughs> but like, it just seemed like the craziest thing. <gasps> Sue, you've got 4,000. <laughs> how exciting. Okay. So let's work on the vignette a little bit more. I wanted to bring it down just a little bit further. So we're going to use this ink blue. There we go. It just seemed like such a weird thing, something you read about all the time, but like actually gets it. I was just so blown away. Even Steve was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? What's happened? <laughs> if we can get this part done, we can take off a uh, partial washi tape too, so you guys can kind of see what it looks like with the washi tape removed. Right? I know. It's like, it's like the validation of, see, that's like when I, when I had the thing in my head, I was like, look, it's a thing. Stay in a dark room because you, <gasps> really? Oh my gosh. I had no idea. Right? Yes, Patty. Exactly. That's what we do. Like we'd rather just like 
not tell anyone without getting the judgment of, oh yeah, I'm sure, you know? Okay, I'm gonna turn this just a little bit. Like, believe me, I would not feel this way if I could choose not to feel this way, but thanks! <laughs> It's just the craziest thing. Okay, sorry, I got concentrating on the ink blue here. Oh, that's wonderful, Vicky. I love that. See, and that's Steve. Like, he is so healthy, it's crazy. Like, he has got the most fabulous genetics. <laughs> and I'm just like cross my fingers. I'm like, please, please, children, get his genetics. His genetics are strong. <laughs> they got the dark hair, the brown eyes, the beautiful olive skin. Like, please take after your father as much as you can. Yeah, I know, right, Ev? I don't know what I was thinking. I'm thinking, oh, it's just the background. It's fine. Do I know? There's a reason I was panicking at the 10 minute coloring. <laughs> I'm just using the ink blue and the black to, to do this. And then we're going to go over it with a gray. Oh, nice, Kara. You're so close. Right, he really is. Like, I told him today, because I'm in the middle of shifting um, some doses, and so, like, I've been off and on, you know, nauseous, headache, whatever else. But, like, uh, after work today, he, he had come home. You know, it's the weekend, too, and everything, but I was just like, all right, we're at this, this, and this point with the kids. Like, I have not prepped anything. I'm not feeling great. Like, I need you to take over. And it was like, without question, he's like, okay. <laughs> the gener oh yeah do it a car wreck in the second grade oh my gosh yeah that'll do it okay so now that we've got that let's go ahead and go in with the gray let's see which gray did i use was it the solely blue no we're gonna use the cool gray Right, Kara? Yeah, Kara, I would not be surprised if you hit 3,500 uh, before the stream's over. All right, so we're going to use the gray to kind of smooth this out. See, I just went over on the washi tape. That's why I put the washi tape, so I can get a nice, crisp, clean border. I'll probably use the heat gun to remove it, though, because I don't want the paper to tear because it's been sitting on here for a little bit. Okay, let's use the white to smooth out that edge. Yeah, hopefully they can get that MRI and finally take a look at things. And it's just, it's almost so sad. Like, I don't ever want to be smug, but it's so satisfying when, like, there's an actual test to show that, like, I'm not making this up. Like, something isn't right. Can you please, please help? <laughs> Ooh, nice, Maylin. Okay. Do I like that vignette? Am I feeling okay about that? I think I like that, but you know what I want to do? I actually want to add a little bit of darkness behind the fish and behind the house. I know, right? It does, it does match. It does. <laughs> it was totally like unintentional, but it does match. Let's see. Okay, so I want to take a little bit of this ink blue and put it behind the fish to kind of help the fish pop a little bit from the background. Oh, our, our lantelopes. We gotta do the lantelopes. <laughs> okay. I'm going light because it is a darker color. There we go. 
Okay, then let's grab the gray. Actually, let's do the Solway gray. Aw, oh, thanks. Right? I know a sleepy fish. Or is, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just a tired fish because it carries a whole house on its back. <laughs> I feel you, fish. <laughs> Okay. Filling that in with the rest of the gray. Okay, yeah, see, I like that. Let's see if I can tilt it a little bit. You see how it kind of adds that little bit of extra shadow behind it? Let's put a little bit down here, too. Right? Yeah, honestly, I've been reading more about that lately just because I feel like everything's adding up to that. Like I have so many things that kind of all point towards that. So whenever I have my appointment next, I'm going to talk to them about that. But yeah, they say that happens from a trigger event. Oh, thanks, Ev. I don't do backgrounds as often as I used to, honestly. Just because like, if, if I have the inspiration for one, sure. But I never want coloring to feel like a chore. So it's like, if I'm happy with it without a background, I'm gonna just leave it. Okay, now let's do the gray. <laughs> right, Marilyn? Aw, oh, thanks, Callie. Pencil crumb. I was trying to scrub my screen. It wasn't coming off. Then you brushed it off. <laughs> oh, I just did not tap my pencil on the cup. Uh, yeah, totally been there. And if I'm feeling extra, um, extra ornery, sometimes if I'm using Prismacolors, I'll just like leave the pencil dust there for a little bit, sweep it into a pile, just hang out with it like it's my new best friend. <laughs> Let's see, okay. This helps for me to like take a second and look back. Okay, so when I complete the other side of this, then I'll add a little bit of shadow here, same thing here and here, but obviously we need to finish the rest of that. Uh, let's do the lantelopes real quick. Uh, let's see what color, let's do them kind of an orangey color. Let's do, okay, this is light sienna. Do that for both of those. Okay, then we're gonna take the Mars orange. Ah, uh, thanks Renee. We're gonna take the Mars orange. I might grab just a little bit of ink blue too. I'm gonna give it a quick sharpen so it's got a nice fine point. <laughs> yes, but see, Ev, you and uh, and I've I've been trained out of it because of the brushes. Honestly, when I first started streaming, I had to watch myself. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use the light sienna. Kind of smooth that out a bit. Okay. All right. So now let's do these bubbles that are here. So how do I want to do these? Let's do, okay. Let's get ink blue. All right. They're so small. There's not a ton that you can do for them, but we're going to, we're going to work with them here a little bit. I'm trying to decide if I want to bring out the paint pen for it. I'm leaning towards yes right now, but might change my mind. We're using the ink blue. Is that all of them? Yes. Okay, now let's sharpen our Chinese white. And the work office has been used for showing things other than coloring. Uh, sounds good, Bidlio. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you. All right, so we're going to smooth out that ink blue with the Chinese white. Kind of softens it just a bit. Oh, wait, that wasn't... <laughs> those are little flower pieces. Hang on, those are supposed to stay dark. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> My bad. Okay. All right, and then for next time, we voted Markers and Kirby, right? I'll have to uh, flip through his books and see what grabs me. All right, uh, let's see. Let's get paint pen here. Let's see which one we have that's going to work. Give it a good little shake here. How 
Hi, Pam. No worries. Sorry, I'm just making sure that it's really mixed. Oh, unless this one's empty. Mm, I think this one's empty. <laughs> I'm shaking nothing. All right, then. Let's try the next one. I could, but I'm going to want to mix it up. <laughs> Fingers crossed this one has, has stuff in it. <laughs> Need a little bit more shaking up. <laughs> Let those aliens grab it. Ah, no promises. I know it looks like I've got a lot of white here, but it's about making sure that it's fully, fully mixed. Otherwise, it doesn't work quite well. That, those, that alien book, I don't know, my thing, I, I like the idea of the book, but my thing is um, some of the aliens are a little too, I don't know, I guess scary? I don't know, they're a little too like angular, too sharp. Okay, I like the book and I like the idea of it, but it's just trying to find a page that I enjoy. Okay, it's a little bit thicker than I'd like, but I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna roll with it. I think it works okay. <gasps> Kara, you made it. Looks like we made it. Unless of course you're sa uh, saving up for the um, hand stitched one. Also gripping the heck out of this marker so I can keep a straight line here. Yeah, my instinct says probably not that one. With the way the thighs are, that one's definitely more of a painting one. Aw, thanks, Pam. And remember, those of you that are really close, I do not have to be live for you to redeem it. You can redeem it anytime, and if you are struggling to find the link, um, you can go to my website and go to the quilt, the community quilt tab, and it has all the links there. Okay, I'm not going to touch that because that is incredibly wet, but you get the idea of what it'll look like when it's finished. So, you know, we've got the vignette on the outside. We've got the bubbles with the white outline. We've got a little bit of the, uh, the darker kind of color behind it to help the fish pop. So when it's done, We'll have the vignette on this side, the bubbles done as well, and the little bit of shadow to help the fish pop. So before we do our words, we're going to remove some of this washi tape so you can see what it looks like with the border. Because you see what it's also done is it's helped keep the pencil dust off the page. So sometimes it gets smeared a little bit. I'm being careful because I know that this um, acrylic paint is still really wet. So, going slowly. If you feel like it's tearing your paper at, paper at all, use a blow dryer or a heat gun to soften the adhesive. Can we request what we want on there? On where? On the Kirby page? Yeah, yeah, this is washi tape. Uh-huh. Okay, and then I'll stop right about there because we still have that other half to do. But you get the idea. It's created a nice kind of border. Oh, oh, for the square. I'm mostly sticking with names just to avoid any issues. Like, but if you wanted to put Brian's name, you could. But like, <laughs> I suppose you could put Jar Jar forever. <laughs> but uh yeah mostly i just have names on there so that'll give you an idea what the border will look like when you're all done but you get just this really nice uh crisp crisp clean line and even if you don't do the border and you want to clean it up later and you got the sign you could always like erase it just a little bit but yeah <laughs> jar jar forever <laughs> okay i will say it's really tough. It's really tough. I will say put in what you want, but I do have veto power because I'm obviously not going to do 
team Jar Jar. I would be okay with that. Yes. I'm not going to do anything religious. I'm not going to do anything political. Um, obviously no swears, not that you guys do any of that, but, uh, yes, you can put in something other than your name, um, within reason. And I have veto power. Okay. Karen, no worries. But yeah, I think once that's all done, it's going to look really, really pretty. <laughs> Hashtag Jar Jar forever. I love it. Nope. No buts. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. I think that's going to look really cool when it's all done. And so, uh, I, I spoke, I spoke with you today, so I know your name now, but I don't know if you want it shared publicly, but user random numbers who I actually know who you are now. Uh, thank you for suggesting this because these two pages together, especially when it's all done is going to look so pretty. <laughs> Shannon, I got a red jacket special. Other people can too. Just, you know, it's all within reason. <laughs> and I always have veto power. <laughs> But yeah, I'm excited. That's going to look really pretty when it's all done. Okay. Do you guys want to do a round of, uh, we're, oh, look at that. It's 10 o'clock on the dot. 10 o'clock on the dot. You guys want to do a little, uh, words on stream before we, uh, so I'm trying to make this to where <laughs> light <laughs> before we call it a night. I can't be polite and discuss Jar Jar. So it's totally political. <laughs> uh, hi, Anna. All right, let's go ahead and pull up our words on a stream. Pause the music. Okay. Words on the stream. Words on stream. Exactly. <laughs> All righty. Let's see what we got for today. Let's get our link. If you guys haven't played before, this is just a fun word game that we play uh, at the end. You can just type your answers in chat and just have fun. Scores like Scrabble. Plays kind of like Scrabble. Good night, Leanne. Here we go. Okay, turn my sound up. All right, everybody ready? Okay, I'm gonna bring my window. Yep. There we go. All right, uh, let's see. Turn, stern, entries? I feel like that's not right. Maybe just entry. Sentry! Oh, okay, see, I had it backwards. <laughs> there we go. Turns, nice. Um, let's see. Oh, nets. Tires! Nice. Ooh, tire the singular. Thank you, Renee. And Renee, you're having a birthday stream tomorrow, right? I mean, that works so well because it's Saturday. Let's see, tens, tray. Oh, what about trays? Ah, nice, Shannon. Honestly, Shannon, I would have been a little disappointed if you didn't get either one of those. <laughs> um, let's see. What about ants? Oh, those are trees. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> uh, let's see. Erst. Oh, okay. Wait, erstwhile. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. Got rent. Rest. Could be an S. What about S E R T? Should be streaming at 10. 10 her time, right? Yeah. So noon my time. But yes. Okay, good. Alex, have you moved yet or are you still there? I'm trying to remember. I know it's I know it's soon. Tomorrow is her official birthday. Okay, perfect. That's me, number one. Well done. Um oh oh oh. Wait, you guys can't see it yet. It's not fair. Noon Pacific. Okay, perfect. Well. No, noon noon central. 10 a.m. her time. Oh, there we go. I read that wrong. Yes, noon your time, 10 Pacific. All right, I'm good. <laughs> oh, frump, I like it. Um, let's see. Free, few, mere, pure, pure. Um, rupee. Let me see, puree. <laughs> um, what about R-E-E-N? Or is that usually with an A? 
Still in Oregon until mid-June. Okay, awesome. Ooh, so are you gonna get to see her tomorrow or are you guys hanging out later? Not that you have to, because I don't. Anyway, none of my business, never mind. <laughs> pure, pure. Oh, perm. Did we do perm? Ah, B, there we go. Nice. All right, skip three levels. Ooh, Aspie, number one for that one. Well done. Um, severe? Ah, okay, yeah, severe. So it's a fake H. Ah, oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. So, uh, reverse for the second one? No, because that's two R's. Reeves, okay, ooh. Reeves singular? There we go, nice, Sue. Okay, so we have sever, veers, reeve, verse, revs, evers. Is evers one? No evers, okay. Oh, serve. I'm trying to get all like fancy, but it's just serve. <laughs> uh, okay, sear, veer, oh, sear. I always forget that one. Always. It's these weird words that I've never used in my life, but I've seen them many times in words. You'd think I'd, I'd remember them by now. Um, okay, there is a fake letter. Collar? Ah, there we go. Collar. Okay, so it's a fake P. Local. Um, hmm, call. Hmm. Oh, what about, uh, coral? Have we done? Oh, yeah, ask we just got coral. Uh, oh, Carol, there you go. Okay, so we have three more four-letter words. Two of them are gonna start with a C, so, oh, yep, coal. And what about Cora? Um, R A L. Oh, Orca. Nice. Um, let's see. Oh, is it Carl one? It's like the only name that I see. I gotta go find out what Carl means aside from a name. <laughs> All right, continue. Aspie, number one overall. Uh, well, I see below, there's a hidden letter and a fake letter. All right, so no below. So we know that the R and the N are good. What about brown? Brown, okay, so we need to clear the E and the L. Okay, the E is clear. So it's a fake L. Fake newborn, there we go. Okay, so it's a fake L and a hidden, oh, hidden N. Fake L, hidden N, so there's two N's. Um, let's see, war, worn, bower. Hmm, oh, renown, yep. That'll do it. A couple more words that start with the letter B. Uh, oh, what about bore? B-O-R-E. There we go. Uh, let's see, so fake L. None, that's nice. Um, uh, we got Warren Wren. Uh, E-R-O-N, maybe? E-R-O? Oh, brew! Okay, that makes more sense. Neon, nice, Kara. Okay, so we have two more five-letter words, one more four-letter word. One of those five-letter words is gonna start with a B. So, B-O-R-E-N, maybe? No, okay. Uh, B-R-O-N-E? Um, B-O-W-E-R, Bower. 
Owner, nice, Durbin. Ooh, we almost cleared the board on that. All right, skip three levels. Aspie, number one in both. Okay, so hidden letter and fake letter. Nothing smaller than five letters. There is an X, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not gonna be it, but, hmm. Try client? If it's a hidden secret textile, that would have been good. Um, outline, okay, so fake X, hidden O. Line out? <laughs> eh? Oh. <laughs> um, okay, what about, um, out lie, there you go. Uh, I keep thinking of four letter words. Ooh, nice one, Aspie. Inlet. Hmm. What about... Hmm. My brain is not braining. Illusion! I would not have gotten that. That's a heck of a word. Not Brian screaming to Mona. Oh, no. Ma, 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 Mona. <laughs> uh, okay, so, oh. Oh, gosh. We need one more word. One more word. Uh, what about just outie? There you go. Unlit. Utile. All right, so we made it. We made it there. Night. Oh my gosh, is my brain just not working? I feel like I should know some of these words. <laughs> uh, but hey, we did it. 56 out of 44. That ought to get us at least skip. All right, Kara, I know my brain's just like, Sleep. and we're done. <laughs> oh, Intel. Intel would have been good. I wonder why I didn't take it. All right, well, ask me number one both level 18. Um, okay, we have an ING. Um, oh, what about signet? No signet, okay. No sting. Um, okay, what about just tying? That doesn't use the S. Tines, okay. So maybe it's the G. So tines, tinies. <laughs> um, I'm almost wondering if it's without the G. Stein. I should try Steins. Maybe it's another S. Sentry. Um. Okay, so if it's not the G. Yetis, inset. Um, what would you use with a Y? Density. Okay. So. Oh my gosh. What would the other seven one be? Uh. Destiny, nice Durbin. Okay, so what about uh, Stein, S T I N E, Dines, um, uh, uh, Dents? Yeah, <laughs> I contributed. Edits? Oh my gosh. Uh, it's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good. Deity? Diets? Oh, that was rough, man. I think my brain, my brain, uh, did not do well on <laughs> that one. All right, let's pop back over here. Yes, okay. Close that. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's see. Can I turn that? that? Yes. Hopefully that's not too loud. A little loud. 
we go. All right. Well, I am calling this page. Uh, I am calling this page done. I will definitely finish this one. We're so, so close. Um, and I'll get that posted. And it's going to look so nice next to these other two. Um, don't forget to check out about Johanna's um, uh, uh, coloring competition. There's lots of goodies uh, up for grabs. It's really simple. You can just literally just color block it in. You don't have to worry about being fancy. It's just for fun and a chance to get some uh, some special some special little goodies. Oh my gosh, my like OBS chat is still putting words. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's everything. We've got so many squares that have been uh, that have been redeemed. I cannot wait to get more up there. It's going to be so much fun. Obviously, we got these ones to add up there. It's going to be great. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I'll browse through my Kirby books. We will plan on a Kirby page. And uh, of course, we'll plan on a Kirby page. Page page and some markers but aside from that everybody have a wonderful weekend uh renee if you watch this back happy birthday hopefully i'll be able to pop by uh tomorrow hang out with you on your birthday stream um thank you again everyone for being here and um yeah keep being awesome and i will chat with you on wednesday we'll start something new all right bye